We need to talk about KDE. <laughs> okay, I see that, Travis. Yeah, PDD, this is how it made it. ABCD pattern on the daily chart, <clears throat> fake breakdown on the 60 minute chart, change of the trend to the upper side, clear range on the 60 minute chart, which coincides with the high or swing high from yesterday. And I was long buys on it. Actually, one of our members here traded it to the long side. Unfortunately, the screenshot is not clean. It will hurt your eyes, but let's see if you can see the trade there. Let me find it, let me find it. Yeah, it will be so unclear, I think, unfortunately, but it's okay. Yeah, it's so unclear, unfortunately. Yeah, you could see he entered at 172 and then added at 174. Let's show you how this looked like here. First entry for him was at 172. You see how good this entry was? And look at this 172. It looks like why the hell would you enter when it's going down at the open or somewhere around here? The answer is simple. Look at this. It's breaking out and this is the retest. This is exactly what we are talking about every single time, right? It's breaking out, it's clearly retesting, and after the breakdown, it's coming back up. Jason took it to the long side around here and rode it up. And then he added the 274 because this was an this was a five-minute open range breakout, which coincided with an ABCD pattern on the one minute chart. The pattern was here. Yeah, it started with the ABCD on the daily, then you go to the 60, you see a pattern there, and then you just execute it here. Hey, Anne. All right, so let's see how you guys traded, and if you have time, I'll go through my trades as well. Mm, I don't know, was it on the, wasn't it in the scanners? Maybe I just had it here on the market viewer or NASDAQ gainers, or losers. It was somewhere. Somewhere it was, no. I, I, my watch list is usually either the NASDAQ gainers, NASDAQ losers, nice gainers, nice losers, um, the trade ideas, gappers list, and uh, finally, the 25 stocks, which I posted on the Momentum uh, webinar. All of those I put here, and then I pick the best. And then I threw them in somewhere. Yeah, it's a lifetime webinar, how to trade momentum. I talked about it like a month ago. Okay, perfect. So let's see what Cole did here, traded NIO. And let's take a look at NIO. Now, this is good. Look at these guys. Daily chart in the middle. If you see a stock gapping into the middle of the daily chart, whether it's a gap up or whether it's a gap down, you know that it will go or it could go either direction. It could go to the upside and find some resistance or to the downside and find some support. Now, all you need to do is to find a setup. Where is it going to go? To the upper side or to the long side? Look what's happening on NIO around here. Where is the 60 minute chart? There is. You see, there is a range on the 60 minute chart. Not a range, but at least there is a level around here. And it's breaking it to the downside. Is it a bad short? Definitely not a bad short. You could trade it to the short side and go with that target of the body and then the week, which is yesterday's uh, two days ago high. And that coincides with yesterday's low as well. Now, let's see the one minute chart. What pattern is this? Bearish engulfing crack. So you are having a bearish engulfing crack, which coincides with the break of the pre-market low, which coincides with a, with some free room on the daily chart, which could act as a target. Now it goes all the way down here. Buying pressure weeks, buying pressure weeks. The daily chart overall is strong. So looking at this and combining it with that, I wouldn't really want to hold on for longer you know, to the short side or, or, or to my short position. And bailing out of this trade was a really good uh, decision call. Now, some tried it to the long here, maybe here, maybe here. That wasn't really good. Uh, could anyone tell me what is the best uh, entry to NIO to the long side? Or where should we consider trading it to the long side? 
5140 to the long, let me see, not really 5140. It didn't give it actually. It didn't give us any good signal to enter to the long side, but where would it have been really interesting trade to the long side? New all time high, that's good, not bad. Break of the 60, also not bad. You could trade it even before the break of the 60. So if there is a range, and by the way, guys, there was a level as well here. Unfortunately, on the 60, it's not, on the 60, it's not showing, but there is a candle somewhere back there. And you could saw this, see this. Let me draw it for you, and now you will figure it out. Oh my God, that's it, we need a square. Now you'll figure it out and you'll see it more clear. Now, if you see this range right here, where are we interested in along on it? This is the break of the range. After the break of the range, we expect a retest and a continuation, right? Middle of the six, amazing, that's a geo, 53. So once it goes into the range, we don't like it so much, but we know that the retest, it could go all the way into the middle of the range and then a continuation to the downside. This could have happened simply easily and it happened a little bit later around here, if I'm not wrong, or maybe it was here. It dropped again down here, right? Or maybe down, down there. You could be interested in trading this thing to the long side only above 53, right? A retest could go all the way into the middle and then a continuation. Above 53, if it's giving you a setup, it's a good long and you could try it for a long play, which maybe tomorrow or maybe later today, I don't know what it's doing right now. Does that make sense? That's why I wasn't really interested in a long anywhere here. It was choppy and it didn't ended up being choppy as well, right? It just wasn't ready yet. So good job, Cole. Matt, let's see what you did. For information, this trade was from yesterday. I prefer to have my losing trades Critique, bad luck or bad trade? No, that's totally fine. We all have bad trades, right? You, me, and everyone. We're having the losers, so we're having the winners. And I'll show you my losers as well today. And we'll learn from both the losers and the winners. So on LI, unfortunately, we don't see the bigger time frames. You definitely you, you can't trade only based on the one and the five. You need to see at least what the bigger time frames are doing. Um let's a look at that for you. LI. And that was you told me yesterday, right? Actually, we don't need the one here now. We need just the 60 from yesterday. This is the fourth. Okay, so look at this. This is not bad, actually. Isn't this a good play to the long side? It's good to the short and it's good to the long, right? Uh, let me draw this for you. So there is a range here and there is a resistance around there. So you could draw it this way. Now, if it breaks this to the downside or this to the downside, you could take it to the short side with the target, the previous resistance right there. Over all the directions to the long side, and we would like this right here or this setup right there to the long side. When is a good place to start getting interested in trading this to the long side? Somewhere in the middle, which is around 30.50. 30.50 would be my interesting spot to trade it to the long side. Below it, if it if it doesn't break the high of the range, I'll be interested in short. All right. Now let's take a look at what you did there. Where was that trade? Mm, this is my trade, so let's. Let's actually open it one more time. I think that's it. So uh, you traded it to the short side. You see, this is the issue. It's breaking down and it already touched the target, which we said. If you take it to the short side somewhere right there, it would have been decent. But unfortunately, after the breakdown, it, it, it hit the target. And I wouldn't have been really interested in taking it to the long side because of this. One rule, and you could add it, guys, to your base rules, never go against wicks, okay? Going against buddies or um, candle buddies is fine. Against weeks, you don't want to do it. Um, so there is the range around here. That was the low, right? It broke down, it came back up, and it closed as a week. You don't want to go against a week. If this was a full body right here, red candle, and then it did this, I would have tried it. And I would have went for with the target, the low of the body, somewhere right there, somewhere right there, anywhere right there. But if it's a week, you don't want to go against it. You also see it actually did sort of a double bottom right here and made a new high up there. So yeah, I would have personally avoided this one. And around 30, 50, you could be interested in a long, right? You'll have a range around here. You are breaking a little bit earlier than 30, 50, 30, 40, which, is, which coincides with the break of the high of the day and ride it up. I mean, like if you are having a clear range like this right here, and let's say it's touching bodies here, touching here, touching here, then it's finally breaking and coming all the way back up and closing above it. This right here, I would consider a fake breakdown. If it closed below, it would have been something else. Mm. 
Make sense? Yeah, I wouldn't go to the, if it's a break of a range and immediately squeeze back up and closes above it, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't also take it to the long side, but I wouldn't go to the short side against the weak, against fake breakdown. Um, let's say there was a body right here and then there is a weak around here. I would go against it because we had a candle before which closed down there. But if it's only one week which is breaking down and coming back up, I would ignore it. Okay, let's see what you did here. Apple, Apple is amazing here. So this is nice. This is actually nice. Let's see what we have right there. So you see this, this is what I don't like. Like only one week, I would ignore it. So we're breaking down. We're closing all the way back up there. And look at this. You can't go against the week. You can't short it here against this only, right? Now look at this. There will be a range around here, right? And there will be another range around here. You could draw both of them. Now, right here, you did break. You did come back up. On the 60, it's not so clean, but it's still not so bad because you also have a double bottom. It's not literally a range, actually, if we draw it, but it's still not bad. You could draw it, right? Now, it's going down, coming back up. In the pre-market, there is a range. Now, this is a range, right? This is a clear range in the pre-market. It's holding around it. You could take it to the short side, either above it, uh, below it, or take it to the long side um, above it, right here. What Joe did right here, he traded Apple to the long side for the break, and you're having room, right? You're having room for your first target, which was his target. You see, this is the low. Another target from you would have been the high, and then just ride it up because you're breaking all the way up there. Now, that's good. One thing, though, this ad is not bad. This here, it's decent, okay? This right here, I wouldn't have added because it's just so far, right? This is a huge move. Around $3 move on Apple with no pullbacks. It's not bad because your average will still be low, right? You you could add on the way up. Don't enter on the way up. Um, but even with ads, you want to wait for pullbacks. So this was good, Joe. JC, let's see what you did. Joe, how have you been doing lately? Are you green overall for the month, maybe? Okay, JC, let's see what you did there. So, Oxy. The daily chart is good. I like Oxy. Right, you're having range on the daily now. This is even more powerful than the 60. See this? This is even more powerful than the 60. It's so clean right there. Now, this is the 15 minute chart, 5, 2, 1, right? This is the 60. It's totally fine, but you could see the range around here and you could see the break of it at around $18. Around $18. See, uh, I would have traded this thing immediately at the open. This stock here, after the hammer, once it goes up, it it's not bad, you could just immediately long it and play it. When was that? That was today. I didn't have Oxy actually today. Where did you bring it from, JC? Oh, so you had this stock on Squawk, right? That's amazing. Look at this, this was so clean. I didn't, if I was watching this, I would have had it in my watch list 100%. Because if the daily is stuck in this range, you could bet that the 60 will also be stuck on the range. This is amazing, right? Then it's breaking up. This would have been like a perfect entry, amazing entry. After the breakout, it's giving you an ABCD pattern, which coincides with the five minute open range breakout, where you could take it to the long side. If you miss this, look at this JC here, traded an ABCD pattern on the one minute chart, added and drawed it all the way up. Now, this is not bad. And by the way, this doesn't look like a big move, guys, but it is big. If you take a look at his entry, which is at 1850, and catching it almost all the way to 1920, that's 70 cents move on an $18 stock. This 5%, it's not bad. It's still popping. Now, this is a really good one, good job, nice catch. 
You still in it? Yeah, look at this. These ads are good. Always adding on the pullback. Always adding on the pullback. Always adding on the pullback. You could always add on the way up. I'm not saying that's wrong. I also do that sometimes. I add on the way up, but it's safer to add on the pullback just to keep your average lower. If you add right here, your average could be somewhere right here. But if you add right here, your average will be somewhere down there. Julian, let's see what you did. And then we'll have Thomas. So Julian traded ACB. This is the daily. This is the five minute chart. And this is a bit the one minute chart. Where did you trade it? First trade was short, a descending triangle. This is not exactly a descending triangle, to be honest. This is, you could, there are two patterns right here or two structures. There is a channel to the downside. Could you see it? So there is a channel right there. For it to be a descending triangle, it needs to make around three touches on a flat support, which it didn't do, right? Let's take a look at the five minute chart. Okay, the five doesn't look bad for kind of a reverse CBCD pattern. The entry though is late. I would have entered on this candle at least. And once it started going against you, the stop loss was good. I like your stop loss at least. So it's not so bad. Let's take a look how it looked like on the 60 minute chart as well, right? And we'll get back to this. It'll be there. Let me open this. Was this today? Yeah, it's today. So you took it to the short side at 10.05. 10.05 on this very candle right here. Look at this, guys. You see where the perfect entry is? The moment it's breaking 9.60. And this is the first five minute candle. I wouldn't have waited for a break for 9.60. I would have entered at the break with this level right here on the five minute chart. The five minute chart and the one minute chart are giving you a little bit better entries. So get in at the break, right? And have your support somewhere in the middle. If this gets you stopped out, you could always re enter on this one around here. Why is that? Because there is a pattern here bullish, engulfing, sandwich. And then ride it all the way down. Now, this is not so ideal because it's a little bit far from the nine and the five, unfortunately, but it's still not so bad. You are going with the direction. Right there. The one thing which I don't like about it, uh, about it is that we had a range on the daily chart right there or somewhere right there, and we did break it to the upper side. Today, overall, based on the daily chart and based on the 60 minute chart, we are more strong than we are weak. You are going into a support area on the 60, you see it, where it bounced from, where it found its support around here, and that's where it starts struggling. So, again, your entry is not bad. Overall, you could have, it could definitely have continued going lower, but looking at this, looking at this, you could have exited at an earlier uh, place for a smaller loss. Double bottom, right? Weeks from the bottom, every time it's going down here, closer to this, it's getting weak back up. The moment it's making you high, bail on it. And if it's going to give you that setup one more time, then it will be a descending triangle, right? If it goes up a little bit, making lower high and goes lower, then you'll have your three touches to the downside and three touches from the upside, and that will be a descending triangle. So let's see. Thanks, Lou, I actually didn't pay attention to that, yeah. So one thing Lou is also mentioning, the average true range on this thing is small. It would have been around $80, $70, $60. So look at this. From the open, $9.80 till the low of the day, $9.10, that's 70 cents move. On a $9 stock, that's almost 8% of the stock's price. So we did the average true range, and we mentioned that in the ABCD webinar. You don't want to get into an ABCD pattern on a stock which already did the average true range. Thanks, Lou. Um, now let's see, you tried it one more time to the short side. Now here it's already dangerous. You made a new high up there. Look at this. 
It's making higher highways and higher lows. I wouldn't have tried it to the short side after that. But uh, based on what Lou said, this only could have been enough sign for you not to take the short. If the stock is making a move bigger than the average true range, just don't look for a continuation on it. This is the first thing to check when trading ABCD patterns. So Thomas, let's see what you did. Thank you. So Thomas traded uh, MU. And look at this, this is amazing. This is amazing. Oh, MU gave me a little bit of hard time, unfortunately. I managed it bad. Not bad, I should have re-entered. I didn't re-enter. I'll show you my trade on MU right now. So the daily gap up. And you know where this gap up went to? It gapped up to all-time high. Not all-time high, I mean, uh, this is all-time high right there, but it still gapped up for a break of all-time high. On the 60-minute chart, there was a range down here. Now, my problem is I didn't take a look at the daily chart at that moment. At this exact moment, I only looked at the, at the range. I thought, I don't know, we're not at all-time high. And I told myself I could trade this thing to the short side and I could trade it to the long side. Had I known that we were gapping up for a break of all-time high, I wouldn't have considered taking it to the short side. Now, Thomas took it to the long side. Your entry was good, but unfortunately, your stop loss wasn't ideal. This is what's holding, right? This is the breakout. This is the stop loss. And even if this wasn't a range, and even if you don't look for ranges, remember what we said, never put your stop loss within one minute candle. Why is that? Because it could break up, could go all the way down, not make a new low, and then squeeze back up. Exactly, it goes up, goes all the way back down there, not makes a new low, and then makes the run. So never have your stop loss within the candle. The tightest thing you could do is the low of the candle. You see that, Thomas? Let me show you how I got trapped on MU. Yeah, Urban, have it at least, like the tightest thing you could do is having your stop loss at a new low. Don't have it within the candle. Now look at this, this is me being stupid a little bit. I traded MU and I traded it for the break down there. And uh, look at this, actually one thing which Thomas mentioned right there, let me open it one more time, Thomas trade. And I like that. I like that you noticed that, Thomas. You see these guys? What did he say? He said a fake breakdown. Why is it fake breakdown? Because it fakes people. And I got faked. You see, I took it to the short side for the breakdown, and it was a fake breakdown which got me out. I exited. And I immediately realized that, okay, I'm being stupid. We're getting into the middle of the range now. And this thing got to all-time high or for a break of all-time high. I need to change my position. I did that immediately. I flipped to the long side. And look at this. Never have your stop loss within the candle. That's what I did. Tightest thing you could do is have it at least at a new one-minute low, which I implemented right there. Unfortunately, I got so unlucky. Uh, I got so out to the penny before it worked out. So that was a loser of one R, and that was a loser of one R here. The idea was right, but uh, I should have re-entered. I definitely should have re-entered on this thing. Let's see what Gio did there. So Geo traded QS. Let's take a look at this. So what did you do there? 60 minute chart, that's good. Look at this, what is this guys? This is a fake breakdown. There is a range, there is a breakdown. This is, should be considered a retest before a continuation, but it goes into the middle of the range. Once it goes into the middle of the range, we're not interested in short, we are interested in a long. Now it's going up, pulling back. You, okay, now this is not something I would have done. I wouldn't have this as my stop loss, or I wouldn't have entered here actually. Why is that? You're starting to wave down. 
So I would have waited for at least a new high right there. Now look at this. I like that you re-entered here. It's breaking down and it's making a new five minute high. Your entry here was a new five minute low when it was clearly making sort of a descending triangle. It wasn't that clean right there. I would have avoided an entry right there. And if I took an entry, I would have given it um, a bigger stop loss. What stop loss? A little bit inside there because this right here is the high of the range or have this small range. And after breakouts, we expect retest, which are going to touch the previous resistance and continue going higher. We know that the retest is not exactly to the penny. It could go a little bit inside. So this here was a little bit of tight stop loss. I would have given it a little bit more room. But now after it's clearly retesting to the penny and after the, another fake breakdown, it's starting to come back up. We take it to the long side, that was good. Nice partial, I love the ad one more time. Partials, partials, partials. Another pullback, look at this now. You're having another resistance, which is acting as support, where he added to his long position and got stopped out. So everything here was right. I like it, well managed. I would have avoided this trade, but the rest of it was really good. Thank you, Thomas. Have a good day. Uh, Mr. T, if you see this price action here, and let's say you take it to the long side around here, you can't put your stop loss within the range of the previous candle. The tightest thing you could do is the low of the candle. This is the tightest stop loss. It's not always good. I don't always recommend it. Sometimes it's good, but this is the tightest thing you could do. Not within the candle, at least the new one with low. Why is that? Because after the break of the candle, it could go all the way down, not make a new low, and then squeeze back up. And you don't want your stop loss to be here in the middle for it to get you stopped out and then work out without you. No, I wouldn't consider this the third leg up. This is the breakout. This is the first leg up. And it still didn't set the second leg, leg up. This could have been the second leg up. This right here, I wouldn't consider it the second leg because this wasn't a run up, right? It just went up, continued consolidating, and then it broke out. And remember, on ads, it's fine because on ads, your average is still low. Nick, sometimes yes, sometimes more. It depends on the price action and how fast it's going in my favor. It also depends on the bigger time frame. If I believe, if it's strong in the daily, strong in the 60, breaking major resistance, really good news, for example, uh, and it's just going in my favor, uh, the move is still even less than half of the average true range, and I'm already at two hours, uh, I would hold for three, four hours before taking any partial. I'll make a webinar about the good entries and good stop losses. It will be in April. So R2 traded NIO and took it to the long side around here. Now we, we did take a look at NIO, right? We took a look at the 60 and everything. Personally, I wouldn't have entered around here because the long for me would have been only about 53. And this is just a chop for me. And the second thing, you took it to the long side on the way down. You see, there was sort of support around here. It broke down and you took it to the long side. I'm not sure what you saw right there. It looks like it worked out to you, right? But uh, for me, at least most of the time when I take stocks to the long side after the breakdown, it failed. After the breakdown, it could run retest and continue, especially if the 60 minute chart was supporting short direction. But if it's something you are studying right now and it works well for you, uh, keep doing that. I'm not saying it's wrong, right? Eventually it's your trade book and if you're having more than 50% win rate or you're green overall on it, continue doing it. And I would be really interested in what you're seeing right there. Uh, you could email me or we could have a chat because uh, I learned a lot from you here as well. You could email me with your thoughts right there and I'll also help you back test it. So yeah, I learned a lot from you guys here.
Thank you. So Sam, okay, Sam did it. Sam, this is amazing. Look at this. You see guys, his entry? It looks like it's the breakout. It wasn't the breakout, but it's a good spot. This is previous resistance. And after the breakout, what do we expect? We expect a retest before a continuation. Now you could take it to the long here. It's totally fine, but you can't put your stop loss exactly at the low of the retest area. This is so tight. For me, my stop loss would have been somewhere inside the range, right? Somewhere inside there. Until I make sure that this is the retest area. And once I make sure of that, and when will you make sure of it? The moment it makes me a five minute high or the moment it breaks this small range right here, I would add to my position and move my stop loss down here down here. So this was amazing. I like the entry. Nice partials up there. Mm. The ad was a little bit iffy. Could you tell me guys why this ad was a little bit scary? Exactly, Sam, you know that. Uh, it had around the support right here. Look at this. It's going up it's pulling back, it's going up, it's pulling back, it's going up and now it's dropping inside and it's making a head and shoulders pattern. This is a clear neckline right here. It's breaking the neckline and you're taking it to the long side at the break of the neckline on the way down, All right? Yes, it was the nine EMA on the five minute chart, but remember the nine EMA is an average. It could always click below it before continuation. If you added right here, I would have told you, okay, that at least that's fine, uh, though it's still, risky and I wouldn't do an, an ad even here. Why is that? Because stocks after the cross of the 50 with the nine and the 20 usually retest to the 50 before a continuation down. I see it broke it. And if you add right here, it would have been a little bit better, but still I wouldn't add right here. Why is that? Look at this. We're having shoulder here. You're having a head. Look at this. This is the formation of the head and shoulders. This is the beginning of the formation of the head and shoulders. You're having a neckline. You're having a head, a shoulder head and you know that the next thing could be a shoulder. So what is this? This is the ABCD pattern with the parabolic pullback. You need to make sure that the head and shoulder pattern has failed. How will you make sure of that? The moment it makes a W shape and breaks the shoulder. That's the place to add or to enter. This is a little bit complex, I know. Um, especially real time, it's difficult to spot, but uh, I don't know, maybe watch, the, uh, watch it one more time when we post this review on YouTube, go through some charts and you'll see this. I, I won't blame you if you enter right here or if you enter right here to the long side, because it's, some, it, it's sometimes a little bit tough to spot this in real time, but the more you do it, and at least if you realize that it's right there, even if you spot it after the fact that it happens, uh, it's progress. We jab Sam. Let's see, Zaki. Zaki traded um, Apple. Now look at this, guys. This is ideal. This is ideal here. We break down. We squeeze all the way back up. Around here, it's a good entry to the long side already. You see the middle? You could draw another range here. Once it gets into the middle, 129.50, it's an interesting long. And that coincides with the one minute open range breakout. I like that. Now we're breaking up, pulling back. Now, to be honest, uh, I wouldn't have taken this to the long side. This is a really huge move, and this is a small pullback. If this is the 100% move, this is around 20% pullback. And for pullbacks, I look at least for 30%. Overall, it's weak on the daily chart. And remember how candle moves? Go all the way up, not making you high, and then squeeze all the way down. This right here, I'd be interested in an extreme reversal rather than a long. I'd be interested in a long here. After this long, I would avoid any long entries. I'd be looking for an extreme reversal. What I like about your entries, Zaki, is that you entered as close as possible to the score. Your entry made you get your risk to reward before getting stopped out. That was amazing. I love your entry. If you entered like me, because I'm bad at entering as close as possible to the sport, if you entered like me somewhere right here, you wouldn't have made your risk to reward, and this would have been simply a loser for you. Looking for an extreme reversal, though, on this trade, look at this fake breakout. Reverse CD pattern. On a stock, which gapped down, but for some reason was going up. Remember, on our webinars, these are the best to look for extreme reversals on. 
take it to the short side, stop loss, add stop loss, and then write the trend down. Let's take a look at this here. So twin traders traded an ABCD pattern. Daily chart got up, that's good. 60 minute chart is strong. I like that as well, right? 30 is going up, 15 is going up. Now you need a setup to get in, right? Let's take a look around here. So this is what we mentioned. This is exactly what we just discussed, right? We are forming a neckline. And for that, you need a W shape. So yeah, I would have avoided this trade. Yeah, we discussed exactly this trade right here. So I would have avoided this one un unless we made um, a W shape right there. Let's take a look at this one. This one though, it's uh, this one is decent. At least it's not so good, but it's at least decent because it's at swing high, previous swing high, making a new five minute high for the breakout right there where you took it to the long side. At least this has something inside it. It's not bad, but this one I would have avoided. It can be view up or any other uh, moving average uh, level. It doesn't need to be only the nine moving average in the five minute chart. The problem here is not that it's type P A B C D pattern. Um, if it was going straight up, okay. And then it does this pullback, and then you highly take it to the long side. I'll tell you this is a good setup. The problem is it went up, it pulled back, it broke up, it didn't respect the previous swing high, it dropped all the way back down, forming a neckline for a head and shoulder pattern. You see the difference? This is the different part. It's not like this. It's like this. You're welcome. Lou, let's see what you did. Uh, yes, Mr. T, at least 30%, that will be ideal. I love 50 to 70, 30% is still decent. Especially if they're so big of a move. So Lou traded NIO. Let's see what you did right there. This is what we discussed, right? It's going into the previous resistance from way back then. Bouncing out of here, going to the long side, pulling back. Um, this is not bad because we could consider this a fake breakdown right here. And then this right here, this right here from the previous 60 minute charts, which you saw right there, uh, a support. It's going up, pulling back, where you took it to the long side. Kind of risky, not my style of plays, but I can understand it. And I know some people who are trading these. We took it to the long side within the candle. Why is that? Because we know it could go all the way down, not make a new low, and then squeeze back up, right? Bounce of the pre-market low. Okay, that's good. Took it to the long side, um, added up there, but for some reason you got out. No reason to get out, right? At least for now. Your average is good on this one. If you're entry here, your entry here, add here, your average is down there. There's no reason to exit for 0.1 R winner or something like that. Either a break even, either a small loss, either a bigger profit. But I see that was only decreasing your share size because you could partial higher. Or you took a partial and then exited break even, right? I guess it was this way. You took a partial and then exited break even. Yeah, I see that. Now this is a little bit tough. I wouldn't recommend anyone starting uh, trading to do this right here. Lou's been trading for a long time. I see his trades. He's trading this style a lot. So for him, it's totally fine. But if you're starting out, don't trade this way. Uh, if you ask Lou, he's not taking any bounce of pre-market level or any bounce of pre-market high. They coincide with some other stuff. Right, Lou? It's not simply because it went to the pre-market low and bounced out of it. Uh, that he took it to the long side. There are definitely more criteria he's seeing and it's his style of trading. It works for him. As we can focus on patterns, focus on stuff which are obvious and working. And then if you see some pattern which is reoccurring and which is happening uh, 
multiple times uh, throughout the day or throughout the week, you could back test it uh, and start working on your trade book for this setup. Now, let me share with you my trades right there. So I traded MU, I traded B, BNGO, and I traded BABA. Okay, I'm wondering if I should hold to my original position and just hold through the consolidation. Uh, yeah, Lou, I don't exit at break even most of the time because exiting at break even uh, is not a technical level, right? So I usually hold to my original stop loss. He's using the ask Mr. T, but this is a chart log. This was a screenshot from chart log. Anyway, we explained MU, right? Uh, I will go through BABA. BABA was difficult as well for me at the beginning. Why is that? Look at this. There is a range. You see it? There is a range around here. There was another range right here, which made a fake breakdown or which was a trend yesterday. And after markets, it's uh, close. It's going inside the range. Today, it's continuing to hold that range. And I told myself, if we break below, we could go all the way down to 225. And that's what I did. I took it in the pre-market to the short side with the target 225. And I had my stop loss within the range of the five minute chart. You see, the range of the 60 minute chart is telling me to bail at 229 or in the middle 228.50. But you don't want to put your stop loss based on the 16 minute chart. You need to see a pattern on the 16 minute chart and get your entries and stop loss from smaller time frames. So I had my stop loss at the middle of the five after I started coming back up and I lost on this one. I think this was around one hour loser. Now it's going up. I want you to take it to the long side here immediately once we started going back up here. But I got slippage and I got a horrible feel in the pre market. I still held it. Why is that? Because now we broke to the upper side and we could go all the way to the middle of the range before continuation. And if this is the range here, middle of the range is somewhere around 228. Holding it when it's pulling back up, bouncing, coming back up, adding to my position and then parceling all the way up. Now, this here was last my last exit. Could anyone tell me why I exited right here? 234, don't crash. That's crashed. Let me open that. All right. So this is my last exit here. Let me get it on the one as well. This is my last exit here. Any reason why? Yes, exactly. Third five minute candle. And ATR is also a good reason. The average range of this thing is around six dollars, and I made a move of six dollars right already. So there was the ATR, there was the third consecutive five minute candle, and what setup? There is a setup as well. Exactly, low. Yes, you're all right. Average true range made third consecutive candle on the five minute chart, parabolic move, double shooting stars at the high of the day. This is parabolic reversal, and I know in parabolic reversal, so it could go all the way to the nine and the five. The nine and the five is 231, and I'm not willing to give $4 back because it, it could just not bounce. It could simply just get, continue dropping down. So I'm exiting all out right there. Now I'm continuing to watch it. The stock already made a move bigger than the average through range, and uh, I expect it to pull back. So let's continue watching that. See that there is a double top forming right there on the one chart, while still uh, us being extended from the nine and the five. I'm taking it to the short side and I'm getting stopped out immediately. Now, why did I re-enter? What did we have around here? What do we have here? I get stopped out and I re-enter a few seconds after. Not exhaustion volume. It's not exhaustion volume. Exactly, Geo, good job. So there is a fake breakout. We're breaking out. And after the breakout, you immediately squeeze back down. Yes, exactly, GG and low. After the breakout, we're squeezing down and I immediately re-enter. And now I could have that stop loss because after the fake breakouts, it usually respects the previous resistance. So I enter right here, I have my stop loss. I'm taking my partial asset precaution down here in case it's going to hold it. And after that, I go all the way down. 
Now, why did I exit all here? The answer is simple. This is the nine and the five and on parabolic reversals, though this wasn't exactly a parabolic reversal. My last target is the nine and the five because I expect a bounce of the nine and the five and I expect an ABCD pattern to be formed, which wasn't a great ABCD pattern. We formed another fake breakout, which could have been a good entry to the short side. And now here you're having an exhaustion volume, a volume which is the average of the previous 10 candles. This is an exhaustion volume at the high of the day uh, with the reverse hammer or shooting star, right? When the stock made a move bigger than the average to range with a parabolic move to the upper side with a fake breakout, you could take it to the short side. Uh, last stock I've traded was BNGO. Where is it? Um, why don't they have it? I think it was BNGO, right? Yeah, there it is. This one was so obvious, guys. Look at this. I'm not sure if this is low float or not, but look at this. One gap, second gap, three gaps. After three gaps, I look for a short. We had a stock like this before, which went parabolic, three gaps to the upper side, and I told you the same thing. It was also on the trade review. Three gaps, I'm looking to the short side. Stock is just getting so extended. Along with that, we're having a good range on the 60-minute chart, which is going down. We are having selling pressure week, selling pressure week, and we are having a new 60 minute low formed in the pre market. I'm taking it to the short side. There is a breakdown, there is a retest. I'm adding to my position after the retest, moving my stop was somewhere up there. Partial, 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 partial. Pull back to another retest, right? There it is. After the halt, I'm adding to my position, partial, and I'm just bailing all down there. Why did I bail all right here? I consider this to be a fake breakdown. We just came back up right here. And I wasn't sure if we could continue going lower. So I exited, it worked out. I think it was more of luck than, an, than analysis, but yeah, this was the last trade. I mean, how do you put your stop losses when you are trading on the five minute or the one minute chart hotkeys? Uh, I don't have hard stops at the open. They're manual trades. Thank you, Gigi. At the open, it's manual, uh, it's uh, mental stops. I get slippage sometimes because of that, but I don't want to get wicked out to the penny. Like MU here, and that was my mistake. I had a hard stop. I didn't have a, a mental stop. Uh, I double clicked and I didn't cancel my stop loss. It went down, got me out and worked out immediately. Uh, that's why I don't use hard stops at the open. I usually have uh, mental stops to survive this type of price action. I, I would have seen it touching immediately coming back up and I wouldn't have hit my uh, montage for an exit. Exactly, that's the reason I don't use hard stops at the open. Mm. Let me see. This is the settings. I don't know, it doesn't display in person. There is not, no settings, right? It's 14 periods and that's it. Yeah, Lou, I can manage multiple trades. Uh, I have been to up to four trades, four positions entered in the pre-market. And I manage them at the open. It's just the probability of them working out based on a breakout in the 60s so high. So I'm not so scared about getting small slippage. Sometimes I get, I get those two hour slippages and you saw that video on YouTube I posted, but uh, it, it works in a foil. And by the way, uh, I have two vertical monitors to the left of me. This is one monitor. This is the second monitor there to the left of me. And this is one stock I'm watching. This is the second stock I'm watching. This is the third stock I'm watching. And oh my God. Anyway, and this is the fourth stock I'm watching. And they're all like exactly to the left of me. I can easily watch those four positions open without getting distracted. I don't have to turn my head to the extreme right or extreme left to check my positions. They're all in front of me open and I could uh, spot uh, some unusual or ugly price action happening to bail out fast.
So that's it, guys. Um, we're almost running out of time. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, aman at beerbulltraders.com. Uh, really good trades today. Sorry I couldn't go through all of the trades. There were a lot of trades today, so I couldn't go through multiple trades for each member. Uh, you can keep them and send them on Thursday if there is something not clear there. Uh, if there is something you really want to know and you are confused about, feel free to email me that trade and I'll total, take a look at it today in the evening. Uh, so yeah, have a good day, everyone. And talk to you tomorrow.